with a group that had played in Europe before. And so I think we felt fairly comfortable looking at the EHL and were quite excited about the prospects that that held. Nick Brothers in goal, a fantastic character, but also a brilliant goalkeeper. Um, I think we were renowned for our team defence, which started with Rich Mantel and Tom Bertram at the back, like fantastic sort of full back pairing. And then a lot of athletes further forward. So Ian Mackay was a full time athlete in the programme, John T. Clark, and, and, and many others that contributed. And whilst we know we had those and Simon Mantel and others, I think every, you know one of the um, values of our team was that everyone played their part and everyone contributed as much as they could. It was a packed to the rafters, you know, fantastic weather, great atmosphere. Um, we'd played EG the week before. Um, we had a great rivalry with friends and, and fellow you know international teammates in their group, um, pretty closely matched. Um, and we were lucky enough to run out 5-3 winners. One of my memories of that game was, you know, Springham going on a run from right half, um, exchanging passes and then finishing it in the D at the other end. So a long kind of end-to-end -end goal, if you like. And in the end, you know, did enough to get through to set up that, that quarter-final with the Dragons. Emotion of being so close, but then the last minute equaliser from the Dragons, um, you know, put us in a pretty tough position where you then have to pick yourself up. And obviously then it went down to shuttles, um, which is one of the first years I think we'd done shuttles properly from memory. Jeff. I have an answer for you. Okay, go ahead. It's no goal. It's no goal. I remember everyone flocking towards Nick and um, the penalty takers uh, and just enjoying that moment with the team and then running over to all our friends and family in the Blue Army, for club members, etc. that were all in the crowd. We felt after the Dragons game that on our day in a one-off game, you know, we were good enough to be, to be in it with anyone. Um, the sense actually that probably OZ were favourites. I, I recall personally having beaten a very good Blumendahl team in Blumendahl in the last in the last eight in the game after our Dragons game. My recollection of the Campo game is sort of tinged with disappointment. Actually, I think we lost we lost three 0 We were down in the first half relatively early and then had to chase the game in terrible weather. Look back on that as a real missed opportunity to get to the final. So no disrespect to Madrid, but I think if we'd played well, like really well on that day, which is what you want to do in semi-finals, um, then we could have been in the final. Just using that pain and frustration of, of, of that day was an easy discussion point for the group. Everyone was driven, our friends and family were all there watching us and supporting us. Um, and just knowing that you know we still had the best that we could finish, the next day was third. And that's what we set out to do. Going down early, you just stay in the game and you keep trying to focus on doing the right things and stay in the game and you don't have to panic. And I think, you know, that I mentioned earlier, that sense of having been there before and played in these sorts of games and, and been in these sorts of games before, just not panicking and keep believing in what you're doing is key. And then, you know, getting back in the game and getting up again was how do you stay on the front foot, how do you keep playing and not try to defend the lead because that inevitably and invariably just invites pressure. We would have kept trying to try and find a way to keep playing as well and keep threatening them because um, you know a one goal deficit is nothing in hockey these days. So with two minutes to go on a penalty corner um, I, I, I was stopping those for, for, uh, for Rich Mantel and others to, to flick. Um, it was broke, It was a broken down penalty corner, the shot was charged down or saved, the ball went out. As they tried to play it forward we won it back so I decided to stay in the D and just see what happens. The ball then made its way over to the other side of the pitch and got played in um, and then right place, right time, wrong person normally probably. I just remember just watching the ball and, and trying to get something back towards the goal really so I took a, took a swing at it. Um, and then the rest just happened. 
little two minutes left and anything could happen so I remember running back and just trying to concentrate and, and see out those two minutes which thankfully we did um, which then meant you know we had like good celebrations at the end I mean it's not the elation that you feel with you know winning the, the final of um, and if I look back on my experiences a, a league final or something like that um, but a real sense of satisfaction that we finished as high as we could do you know great for the people that had come to support us there and um, just good for the club because it was um, well earned. Wimbledon should be really optimistic going into the, the final four it's a one-off game for a chance to play in the final and they've proven with the quality of the teams that they beat in KO16 and KO8 that they can beat anyone on their day and whilst I'm sure the other teams are all saying the same thing as well with um, Orange Rude and, and Rottweiss and the Dragons that they should look forward to being um, you know giving it everything that they can and, and really embracing the occasion and enjoying it. And Wimbledon have won it here! An English team has beaten a German club side in a shootout with a perfect five from five and England have a representative in the final four.